What's in the box? Well, I'll tell you what's in the box. In this box, there's a bunch of blues solos going on. That's what it is. And today I'm taking a look at the elusive blues box, figuring out what it actually is and how we're going to use it. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hello and welcome, friends, to this episode of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that will help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and check out the description <laughs> for all of the links from the show. I got going a little too fast there. Okay. We like to categorize things. We like to say, this is how you do this, 100%. And there's no discussion. That's how you do it. This is kind of a new thing, though. I'm in an interesting age. Half of my life before the internet, the other half after the internet. My memory's functioning. <laughs> my memory's intact. And I've got some opinions on how the internet has affected learning in general, but specifically learning to play the guitar. I hate to break this to you. Popular guitar, rock, blues, country, jazz, even blues, it, it just happened. And you could say that it happened by accident. There's never been a board of stuffy people who sat down and say, this is how guitar is going to be, and we're going to learn it like this, and here is the curriculum, and we are going to go from here to here to here. And if you make it to here, if you're that lucky, <laughs> work that hard to make it to this point, we're going to hand you an expensive piece of paper, and you will be able to play guitar. That's not how it, it happened here. It, it, it uh, started with some stuff that sounded good. It started by experimenting. It, it started by trying some different things and seeing what happens. Uh, we got to some standards with the different styles of music from consensus. We decided collectively, hey, that sounds good. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Well, let's do some more of that. <laughs> That's how guitar Got done. Bunch of accidents, a bunch of trial and error. Bunch of people saying, that sounds cool. I like that. I don't know. I think it's healthy. I think that's a great way to build something. Say it. It feels good. Right? That's the way it goes. I don't know how a lot of this stuff came to be for real, but we all have the, the stories now. There's the lore of how things came about. Uh, I don't know exactly how a lot of things happen with guitar. I do know what I like, and I do know how to uh, recreate that on the guitar. Do I know the, the first people who were doing it? Do I know why they did it or how they did it? Not exactly. I know a little bit, though. So we're talking about the blues box. Now, if you go online... And you search, well, what is the blues box? How do you play the blues box? How do you do that? You're going to get a lot of different answers. Uh, some people will say, well, it's kind of the, the top of pattern two and the top of pattern three. Some people say, oh, well, there's five blues, bo blues boxes. And they basically give you the pentatonic scale pattern. Say there's blues box number one, blues box number two, three, four, five. Some people say, okay, well, uh, you can use uh, uh, pattern one of the minor pentatonic. That's a whole blues box there. But on the other scale patterns, uh, you can use the top of that one or the middle of this one. Or I don't think it was ever spelled out like that. The people who made the these places on the guitar where they could get some really cool licks and they tended to hang out on those places. So let's, let's talk about the blues box. Um, what, what is it? Well, it's a group of notes. It's a collection of notes in a place <laughs> on the guitar where your hand doesn't have to move around a whole lot. And it's shaped like a box. 
Okay, so we got four corners. There's lots of different sizes of boxes, but they all have four corners. You know, they all have, they're in the, some sort of a rectangle or a cube. Well, we've got a little bit of that here. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the blues box. Whenever I see the players, BB King, Albert King, that I love playing that stuff. Um, it doesn't look difficult to play. It looks kind of easy, cool and easy. Uh, and a lot of cool sounds come out of this without having to move your hand around. You get a lot of different sounds without shifting from pattern to pattern to pattern. That's to me what the blues box is. It's a, it's a little place to do some fun stuff. This is my opinion. Everybody has their opinion. This is my opinion. And uh, from seeing some of the greats and from, from jamming with a few of them, and seeing how they used it kind of sits. I, 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 I feel that um, my get, I didn't ask anybody, how do you play the blues box? I didn't, I, I got to play with Hubert Sumlin. Didn't ask him any questions, just played. <laughs> was, was so fortunate, felt so fortunate to be there. I just, I didn't want to rock the boat. I, I, hey man, whatever you want. <laughs> right. So the thing that a lot of these great players to me had in common who used the blues box the most were they were vocalists. They were singers. Uh, they were singing a little bit and playing fills in between songs. I can see Albert King. I can see BB King uh, singing a little bit and then hitting, hitting a cool lick, uh, a, something that set off what they just sung. Uh, and they didn't have to move their hand at all. It stayed right where it was. It sing, go back, play, sing, go back, play. Hand stayed in the same place. It was an easy place. Uh, if any, if you've ever sung and played guitar in front of an audience, you know that something's got to give. You can't put a hundred percent into your vocals and a hundred percent into your guitar at the same time. It's uh, it's a give and take, right? So you uh, you couldn't be singing and then do this enormously uh, vast lick that starts from the bottom of the guitar, the top of the guitar, and get back to your vocal in half a measure. Just couldn't happen. So we got to figure out some ways. That we, how can we get something cool that fits in there in the time that we have? Um. So how do you use a blues box to me? Well, first thing is you got to know the root. You got to know what the key center is. What's your strong note? We talk a lot about strong notes and weak notes. Strong notes and weak notes, if you can understand how to use those, you are communicating with the guitar. We have a lot of different notes. We, they, they do a lot of different things. Uh, but if you know how to use them, what their function is and how to use them, use them you're in great shape. So we need to find the root. That's going to be our punctuation. That's going to be when we say something with the guitar, that's going to be the thing's going to let people know that we're finished what we're going to, what we're going to say. We're going to move on to the next thing. Uh, something that that's interesting here. Uh, we're going to be talking about the minor blues box today. Uh, there's a major one, and then there's some arguments for some other ones, too. Those are the two big ones, the major blues box and the minor blues box. We're talking about minor today. But between those two, there's something very interesting. Uh, where the root note is. The root note is on the B string. Very important, the B string. So the B string is kind of in the middle of these high notes. You can go up a little higher. You can go down a little bit lower. But still stay on the, the top three strings the unwound strings to get a nice sharp uh, cutting lick in there. Um, when we play with the minor blues box, the root note, I'm just gonna say G. It's being G, G today. There we go. The root note is using the third finger. In G, it will be on the eighth fret on the B string. There's our G. Um, if we were to play major, our first finger would handle the root duties. So our third finger 
at the eighth fret for G. You go back two two frets. You've got the flat seventh. That's an F. So we're gonna use those two notes, and then on the high E string, the next two. Sixth fret and eighth fret. That's a B flat and a G. I mean, so, sorry, that's a B flat and a C that revolve around this minor blues box. Now that's four notes of the five notes of the pentatonic scale. Most of the notes we need are right there in this two fret span. It's got four corners, it's a box. So within that, what's the only other note that we don't have, we have, so far we have F, G, B flat and C, uh, we need um, a D. Well, look, if we go to the G string on the uh, seventh fret, We've rounded out all five of our pentatonic notes right there. Don't even have to move. So we have one note on the G string we can go down to, and then our four notes in the box right there. So if I'm playing, there we go. If I'm in G, I'm playing, the chord I'm playing is the D7 shape, dominant seventh chord, uh, the, the reverse triangle, right? And that is played up on the sixth and seventh fret. So it's right there where my hand is. So I've got the chord I need. I've got all of my notes in that box. I've got my bending notes, the top note there. This is the top of pattern two, everyone loves. That is a great bending note. You hear that all the time in blues and everything else too. And we have the minor third, which you hear uh, in minor songs. You know, it's, it's kind of touchy to bend that up a little bit, but in uh, blues songs that use just dominant chords, they bend up a little bit on that one too, towards the major third. So we have, uh, I mean, and you're driving, but you can see this. It's one, three, one, three on the top two strings, right at the sixth fret, very easy. Now we just take our second finger on the G string, the note that's in between those frets on the G string. There we go, there's all of our notes. Um, it's our anchor all around the, the, the root, and we have everything else we need all around there. Easy stuff, okay? But what happens when you need a little bit more? Well, do you need to go shifting a bunch of different positions? No, you don't at all. Every note that you need for a whole bunch of different sounds is right here under your fingers. So let's take a look here. Start from our root, we'll go higher. So we have our root G. We have uh, the next note of the box, the sixth fret on the E string, that's our flat third. So, well, what did we miss? We missed the second. Well, all you have to do is go back for it. So if you want that full natural minor sound for something, you just have to go back one fret with your first finger on the high E string. Also, now you're in natural minor territory. You've got the ninth. Okay, let's go back to our minor third. Um, now we could go up a fret from there. This would be between the sixth and the eighth fret. So the seventh fret. Ooh, that's interesting. That's going minor third to major third. And then back to the root. That sound of especially over blues, over dominant seventh chords, minor third to major third to the root, or minor third to major third up to the fourth, which is our C note in this key. Right, 
right there, new sounds all over the place. Let's keep going. So we've got, um, we have root, we have our second, there's our, our um, back into the box now, we've got our minor third. In between the notes on the high E string, we've got our major third. And then, straight across the last note of the box, that's eighth fret on the high E string. That's our fourth. What can we do from the fourth? We can bend that. Talked about that before. But there's another thing that we can do. Uh, the blues scale. What's the blues scale? The blues scale adds a flat five. That sound. we can use one fret above our highest note of the box to get the flat five sound. Okay, so going up from the root. <laughs> lots of different sounds we can use there. Let's go the other way. Let's go back. So, so here's our... Now, the, the note... The, here's our root. That's the eighth fret on the B string. If we go back one, that's our major seventh. Um, unless you're playing, uh, I'm gonna save save that for our major blues box. So that's gonna be kind of a sour note. Uh, of course, you could do it. You could you could use it as tension. Uh, we got still. I kind of shy away from that in uh, in the blues. Uh, but but the, our first. Um, first finger on the sixth fret now, the, the lower part of the blue box. That's our flat seventh. But what happens if we went back one more? Ah, this is something we can use. That's the major sixth. That's the note that you hear in the Dorian scale. So say we're playing... We wanted the Dorian sound. That was fun. It's a really neat thing, the blues box. And I hope you you try it a little bit. We're going to talk about the other one in a week or two. Uh, what's going on? What's going on with you? How are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing right now? I'm cu I'm curious. I'm home at work. You, you may be at home at work. A lot of people are still doing that now. You may be on your way to work. Could be at the gym. Could be uh, taking the kids somewhere. Who knows? I have no idea. I have no idea what you're doing. Uh, I'm just happy you're here. And I've uh, been really enjoying this time uh, that I've had the past few weeks, week and a half or so, uh, being able to work on this full time. I mentioned it the other day, and uh, it is really something. Everything that I've done up to this point has been kind of in the cracks while I was also doing some other things. I'm super excited to be able to put a lot into this. In fact, in one week, <laughs> I've redesigned the entire academy. Totally redesigned. Totally easy to use now. A place that I'm going to easily be able to add new content in. Uh, we and it has a, a super functional way of doing live group lessons that we're doing in the academy. We've been going through the past few weeks. We've been going through the 202 level together. I'll be taking questions live on a Zoom call, type Zoom type call, uh, and I uh, and I'll go through these uh, levels in the course, but uh, add some more things in there, bring some more licks to the table, uh, take questions, learn some stuff, learn about oh this is difficult for for folks here, and um, and then have some fun spending time with them. We did a lot of that this past week. It's been great. Uh, we're also gonna have a let's see, we're gonna have our on uh, next Tuesday, we'll have our Christmas get together for Academy members. Uh, I'm going to be putting a lot of stuff in there where uh, if you like the podcast or you like the video on YouTube, I'll have extra things uh, there. So I'm planning on doing a whole thing about the blues box in the Academy that will go along with these and will go along with uh, what I would ask everyone who's interested in rock guitar, country guitar. If you've been listening to the podcast for some time, I uh, used to mention my course. It's a free course. It's a free six-part course called Get Your Blues Solos Under Control. 
and I'm doing a little bit more blue stuff. I've got, I'm kind of have blues on the brain lately. Um, so I would like to direct you towards that. If you haven't signed up or if you haven't looked at it in a long time, uh, head on over to get your blue solos under control. There's a lot of licks in there. We also were doing that for a while, putting licks in there, but it's, it's, it's the good beginning foundation to start making sense of this stuff. Uh, there was no rules in the beginning. It was just what worked. And so w our job now is to make sense of what they did and, and try and figure out a way for us to do it. It's a great place to start. It's free for you. Uh, and like I said, I'm also going to be putting some other things into the academy that go along with our topics as we go on. So it's a great time to, to, to join up if you haven't joined up or if you haven't been over there in a long time to head on over there and see the difference. There's a ton of new stuff over there. It's a great time to get involved with this community. There's a lot of fun stuff happening. Uh, and I am so excited to go through the holidays with this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so head on over to playguitaracademy.com forward slash blues dash solos dash under dash control. Or just click the link. Blues, Get your blues solos under control free for you. And um, I enjoyed our time. Our I enjoyed our time together today, and I hope these videos turn out. It's a lot. It's one thing to just sit in front of a microphone and and uh, and tell you all the stuff that I'm interested in, you learning and and uh, all of the, the the cool guitar stuff that we talk about. Um, it's another thing to get, have all this other extra equipment going at the same time. So hopefully, we'll see in a few minutes once I close this up uh, if everything worked out. Okay. Well, I'm going to call it. That's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. Make sure to hit the button below to subscribe to the show. If you've benefited from this podcast, please leave a favorable Apple Podcast review. It's the best way to make sure we get this very valuable content to more guitar players around the world. And if more help, structure, and results in your guitar playing sound good to you, what are you waiting for? The new Play Guitar Academy is here Join the world's most exciting and carefully playing guitar system, and together we're going to build your online home base for guitar. Online, online home base for guitar. Thanks again, everybody. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.